We are recording, but we're not. We're, we'll just don't there. put that in. I know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Illegal, he means Mount not. Rushmore. That is hog wild. Oops. Wrong one. <laughs> That's like, there are no mountains in Halloween <laughs> Havoc. <laughs> like that. This hog- is not Halloween like, Havoc. He fucking starts playing in his goddamn Mount Rushmore. Ooh, Ooh, spooky. Me. <laughs> Dead oh, president. <laughs> You are totally the biggest mark. And I have had the brain to do you. Hulk Hogan, you can go to hell. And all these people are a bunch of stinking bums, aren't you? The reigning United States heavyweight champion, Brett Hitman Clark. Hey everybody out there, it's that time again, it's late to the Nitro Party, and today we have a special report. We're going to be talking about WCW Halloween Havoc 96, just to keep everybody up on the storylines as it relates to Nitro, because Nitro is what's really important, not these bullshit pay-per-views. But we're going to go over the card, give our thoughts. Um, Tell you what, baby, it's Halloween Havoc. We'll spend... uh, Don't get crazy, they're going to be scary, get spooky. (laughs) Spooky, scary. Look at this crazy half eight apples on a thought of a name <laughs> there. <laughs> what were those things? <laughs> they were jack o' lantern. So like we've got the paper. Apples. We've got the pay per view playing, but we're not going to be do- giving a blow by blow rundown. We're going to spend about a half hour or so with you, and we're going to go through the card, go through the storylines, go through uh, what happens uh, at Halloween Havoc '96, just to keep everything up. So the next time. You're with us on Late to the Nitro Party. You'll be all caught up. Uh, Halloween Havoc 96 took place on... What day is that? Uh, October 27th. October 27th, 1996 from the Las Vegas... Or uh, the MGM Grand <laughs> Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Attendance was approximately 10,000 people. It had a .7 buy rate. Whatever, you can look that up to whatever that translates to in buys. Did, well, according to the Observer, it did approximately twenty two thousand dollars at the or twenty two hundred twenty two yeah two hundred twenty thousand dollars at the gate sixty nine thousand in merch half um, of the merch being NWO products wow NWO is selling a lot so of ha- fucking seventy grand thirty five thousand of that was just NWO so um, to start out the night we get a package on uh, Hogan turning heel goes through mm. everything that happened at Bash the Beach ninety six and thereafter. <laughs> Uh, we cut to the the announce booth is um, Tony Schiavone, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, and Bobby Heenan. Um, they give their thoughts on a few things, and then the first match is going to be actually no wait. We had two dark matches. Uh, first of which being Jim Powers getting a win. Look at that, wow. a win over Pat Tanaka. They won't allow that to be on TV. Though. No, I can't put that shit no. on TV. And it's like uh, the Goldberg loss. Juventud Guerrera and Psychosis defeating Damien and Halloween, better known in America as Cyclope, better known as Dean Malenko. <laughs> so, um, so those are your two dark matches. First match out of the gate uh, for the WCW Cruiserweight title. Dean Malenko defeats Rey Mysterio Jr. in 18 minutes, 32 seconds, and wins the Cruiserweight title. Uh, Meltzer is going to give this match four and a quarter stars. I don't have much to bitch about. Go watch it. It's pretty damn good. It, I mean, these two guys have worked together a lot. They're, uh, it, it's good shit. Best match of the night by a decent margin. Um, I, Grant, you yeah, find your I notes yet? Say so Fuck no. I, I remember, I think my only note on this match was uh, save yourself the trouble and turn your fucking TV off when it's over. Yeah, pretty much. It goes downhill from here. Um, There is, I I remember seeing this now, there is a guy with a really bitching Papa Shango sweatshirt. Nice. In the front row on the hard camera. It's awesome. I want one. Got Bill Apter at ringside taking photos. Mm -hmm. Um... So Malenko wins uh, cruiser, the cruiserweight title. These two guys are going to feud for pretty much till both of them leave the company, or Malenko will go first, obviously. I guess Mysterio was there till the end, wasn't he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was world champ. Not at the end, but at one point, remember, he beat Kevin Nash, didn't he? That wasn't for the yeah, title. Yeah. Oh, 
I'm so that wasn't he, for the he, title, he, was it? <laughs> I don't. No, no I, don't, I don't think I don't, it was. I don't think. I thought he, it was. He was. He was there till the end. I think he wrestled on the last Nitro. He was the European. Yeah, champion, he right? did. Yeah, he. WCW had a European championship. He was the U.S. Tag Champ himself. You're you're fucking <laughs> you're just making shit up, are you? Are you? I don't know. I can't yes, tell if he's you're making shit up. I can't tell if he's serious. Next, Remember the uh, the cruiserweight tag team championships. That yeah, that lasted for like a week. Yeah, and, and, then, then, they got and then well, and then the company was over, <laughs> and, it, and it put the company under that immediately. Is, that's it. Yeah, Giovanni getting fat and the cruiserweight and tag La- Lash Larue getting fat and all that shit. So, uh, moving on before Zach tanks this whole thing. We got a singles match. Uh, next up, oh, Diamond, Jesus. Go ahead. Diamond Dallas Page defeats Eddie Guerrero in 13 minutes, 44 seconds. Um, I think Guerrero gets legit injured at the end of this okay. because the finish is very strange. Um, it's like Guerrero basically takes a bump. And lays there, and I think he just told DDP to go home, because Paige just picks him up off the ground, diamond cuts him, yeah. and it's over. He looks pretty limp towards like, the end of the match. Like, he... Yeah, I think Guerrero hurt his arm at the end of the match, and just told DDP, just go home. He was supposed yeah, to go barely, over anyway, he was, like, he's hurt. He could barely sell that. So, um, good match, nothing special. Um, pull up the the Observer. I think... I think Meltzer gave it like two stars or something. Uh, two and a half stars from Meltzer. Grant, your thoughts. These guys work together a whole fucking lot. And um, I think this is we finally find the Battle Bowl ring. Yeah. And uh, it's a thing for another little while till we quit talking about it. There was just, there was no reason for them to still be doing this. I, I... We, me and Clay were talking earlier. We wonder if DDP still has that. He very well might, because I think that was before uh, before you called in on our last episode. Um, what the fuck was I gonna say? Battle Bull Ring still exists. DDP. Oh, it's one of those things. <laughs> we are fucking top quality tonight, ladies and gentlemen. It's one of those things where they just quit talking about it. It wasn't yeah. like they phased it out. They just totally quit talking about it. So, next up, we have a uh, promo package where Randy Savage picks out a name out of a giant Slim Jim tube for the uh, Dodge Ram uh, pickup truck truck Slim Jim extravaganza. Jesus. So, some, I think some broad from Virginia wins it. Dean Malenko cuts a very uh, vanilla promo. And then we go to the next match, which is Grant's favorite of the night, the giant... Versus Jeff Jarrett with Ric Flair. Surprisingly, Meltzer gives this two stars. Hmm. It's not bad. <laughs> Luckily, there is involvement from Ric Flair. Uh, the match ends in a DQ when Flair on the outside low blows the giant who's about to choke slam Jarrett on the floor. So. At least Flair's involved. He has something to do in this match. So uh, Yeah. Weird booking. I don't know. Well, Jarrett does a good job of like playing the little guy, like a lot of speed like he's he's running around, ducking stuff, some nice drop kicks. I right. Jarrett's got a nice drop kick. I mean, I don't yeah, like no, him, does. but he's got a nice drop kick. It's fine. Spell Rick name. Rick, uh, Flair's name. That it just said Rick. It didn't say Rick Flair on the Who tombstone. I don't know Rick. Uh, Derringer. Yes. <laughs> I always like how they dead? put. I always like. I don't, I don't know. I always like how they put Crockett on one of the tombstones oh, yeah, on these. Yeah. Like every Halloween havoc, they yeah. put Crockett on one of the tombstones. So uh, Grant, you're just coming in with no notes tonight. <laughs> no, I don't know what happened to you're him. Just, uh, just, no, and I. I don't mind the match itself. I just, I, cause, cause Jarrett gets disqualified, right? Yes. Cause Flair low blows the giant on the outside. They're the fucking faces. Well, I mean, Nick Patrick is the referee though. 
Well, I mean, so, still, it's stupid, but it's fucking stupid. But what what have we seen the last year? Ric Flair can be a huge baby face while simultaneously kicking people in the nuts. Yeah, they just don't do it here. Uh oh, Zach's kids are not screaming. It's no, it's a stupid match. Doing. It doesn't I make mean, any sense. It, it, I don't like the ending. I don't know. I thought it was okay. I think we're going to have to disagree on that. You're just blinded by your hate for Jeff Jarrett. Well, I, 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 you know, I don't even care if if Jarrett fucking won this clean and then the NWO jumps him and beats up Flair or if the Giant fucking wins clean and then Flair comes. I don't, I don't, it's not, there's no point to this. Yeah. I mean, they're trying to get Jarrett over. It's one of those things where, yeah, it was supposed to be Flair. And then he gets hurt. There well, is, a- and 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 if and if if Jarrett was was winning the match, and then the Giant, you know, started to have a comeback, and and Flair cheats, and oh, now Jarrett's pissed because he got him disqualified, and they're gonna they're gonna turn him on each other. All right, fine, but all you've done is get the fucking good guy fucking DQ'd for for no goddamn reason. Yeah, agree to disagree. Next up, we've got Six versus Chris Jericho in a, uh, this is a good match. I mean, both of these guys, you could put them in there together and they're, they're going to make something out of it. Uh, yep. Meltzer gives it three and a quarter stars. One thing I'd forgot about on this show, I like how the NWO comes in from the crowd instead yeah. of coming in from the back. Because if they're this invading force, right? why would they come in from the back because then they're just one of the boys they're coming in from the crowd it shows that they're this outside entity um one thing that shivani was talking about when uh, he talked about starcade 97 he didn't like how sting came in from the back uh, yeah and on the hogan sting match thinks he should have either come in from the crowd repelled down something like and yeah i never really thought about that because i was 13 years old when it happened or whatever but like that makes a shitload of sense why the hell wouldn't he rappel down from the ceiling before the match just to add a little more grandiose to the entrance and it'd get him over even more it'd make it seem like a bigger spectacle that's a good point so during this uh, Jericho 6 match there's a lot of Nick Patrick shenanigans um, has trouble getting down to make the count for Jericho. Uh, Six hits a spinning heel kick, and uh, Jericho uh, is defeated uh, with a pin. This is going to lead into the feud, if you remember. I believe it's at Sold Out 97, so that's only a few months away, four months, three months or so, where Jericho yeah. wrestles Nick Patrick with one right. arm tied behind his back. So this is kind of the beginning of of that feud because Jericho gets screwed over in this match by Nick Patrick. Next up, we've got Lex Luger versus Arn Anderson. Lex Luger wins with the torture rack. Um, Meltzer gives it two and three quarter stars. I think this match is to write Arn Anderson off TV for a while. Did you notice that? How they they kind of played an injury angle and kind of did a stretcher job (laughs) with him. And yep. my guess is we're coming down to the end of his career. Yeah. He's got all these neck problems. They probably did this angle. Just the angle is, is that Luger won't release the torture rack. Like right. he keeps him in it for a very long extended period of time. And so Arn's going to be rode off TV for a while. Grant, do you remember anything about this show? Uh, no, I, I remember thinking that not even Arn Anderson can make quote-unquote tapping to the torture rack dignified. No, you just flail your arm up in the air. <laughs> it, it looks uh, al- al- Also, I, I wish they would have carried on the storyline that Luger is an idiot for injuring what you would think would be a key player in this war yeah, against an invading that is force. Yeah, that is a good point. Um... One thing, uh, you're talking about tapping to the torture rack. My favorite instance of that is when it happens in uh, WCW NWO Revenge. 
Oh, and yeah. The yeah. N64 sprite tapping to the torture rack is awesome because they just limp wrist it. It's like yeah. uh, it's like Gomer Pyle waving. Well, because that's how that's how Hogan taps to it for real. And uh, yeah, when they uh, go on Nitro, that's uh, coming yeah. up about about eight months from now. Next up, we get a interview with Stagger Lee Marshall with Harlem Heat. Stagger Lee in person? Yeah, Stagger Lee Marshall. He's right here. No, it's a fucking hologram of him. R2-D2 displayed it. It's usually it. on the phone. So, the, uh... They should have a call in from Lee Marshall on the road. Just, <laughs> just a what? recording. In two places at once. Um, next up, we got the Faces of Fear versus Chris Benoit and Mongo, Steve Mongo McMichael, with Deborah and Woman. I mean, this match is what it is. If you're going to skip a match on this show, this is probably the one to do it on. Um, star and a half from Meltzer. Mong- Which is not the worst match uh, rating on the card. No, <laughs> it isn't. But Meltzer also hates Hogan. Yeah. So, um, the, the match isn't horrible. Mongo has marketably improved. Like, yeah. he's getting better. It's so from horrible just to bad. The, yes. The main angle on this match is that after um, Benoit hits the diving headbutt and uh, wins for his team, and uh, the Dungeon of Doom comes out, lays waste to Benoit, and uh, Mongo beats him up. Kevin Sullivan comes out. And this is where we start our maybe the most retrospectively awkward angle of all time. Hmm. The Kevin Sullivan, Taskmaster, Woman, Chris Benoit, Love yeah. Triangle feud. So the Dungeon of Doom has nothing to do with like monsters anymore. They're just a bunch of like New Jersey like pretty, hobo looking people. Pretty much. They're not they're not they don't have like Yetes and sharks and Kamala's. They just wear white beaters and, and, like flannel, <laughs> and flannel coats. And... Yep. I mean, it's big, but like in the ring right now, Big Bubba, Faces of Fear, Conan, and Kevin Sullivan. And Guys also, like sometimes a leprechaun, sometimes not. <laughs> so, this match really gets that angle over, and it's, it's going to be hard to watch for about the next year, because it's... Eh, ugh, ugh. But we'll move on from that depressing shit. (laughs) So, next up, um, the Outsiders defeat Harlem Heat for the WCW Tag Team titles. Uh, Meltzer gives this three and a quarter stars. Um, Outsiders come in from the crowd again, which I like. Um, The big deal on this match, this is kind of the... End of the Colonel Robert Parker era because he flees oh, at the end you. of the match and leave he uh, he leaves um, Harlem Heat kind of high and dry at the finish because he gives his cane to Kevin Nash to use at the end of right. the match. Is this? I'm probably totally wrong. Is this their first tag team match other than Bash at the Beach '96? I believe you're right. Which that was a three man tag, yeah. basically. But I, if there is, I don't remember it. Um, no, and they're gonna, um, they're. I don't think they're gonna lose the belts for a long time. No, and like, not in this combination. But yeah, Booker T hits the Harlem Hangover, almost kicks Scott Hall's <laughs> teeth out of his head. But Mark Curtis is distracted. He I gets here, star. and he just gives him the cane. He gives him the cane and runs for his life, and that's the end. I think the Outsiders would have been one of the best potentially tag teams ever had they wrestled more than nine times total and had any any clean finishes. Well, it was in their contract. I mean, they don't have to work too hard. I mean, they aren't working every. They aren't working WCW Saturday night in the freaking opener. So yeah. So yep, Outsiders go over, and uh, it starts. I mean, we could look it up, but I'm pretty sure it's a long title reign. Faces of Fear might beat them, but they don't hold it for long, um, I think. The, you know, I'm basing that on them being the uh, default champions on 
the revenge video game. So I'm assuming they had a run in there sometime. I I believe, and I believe when they lose it, uh, it's with six in there because they had the Freebird rules, right? And that Uh, way they could say, "Oh, you didn't really beat Hall and Nash. They beat Hall and six, right? Right." Kevin Nash got to fucking protect himself a little Mm -hmm. bit there. So I think that's the end of Colonel Robert Parker as a manager for Harlem Heat Is anyway. It? I, I want to say they have a falling out for obvious reasons after that. Right. Might be the end of him on this show. So up next, we have the main event. Um, Hogan does an interview from the crowd wearing a hairpiece. <laughs> <laughs> I've never understood oh, this. Oh my god! It's the hair piece he's wearing on the on Three Ninjas. It must be, or at least it's, similar to it. Well, the idea and storyline is that Hogan has hair now, just because. Because he's Hollywood. He got yeah, plugs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like that. It's and it's. I I believe they're attempting to sell it, or Hogan is. The idea is selling it as real. Well, and I think they're selling it too because it makes him a bigger heel. Because remember when he ga- we he spray painted Savage's bald spot, mm-hmm. and he right. like gave him shit for being bald, and that's what something a heel would do, pointing out somebody else's imperfection when you have the exact, exact same, same problem. Yeah. Like that's that's good heel work. Like George, like George Costanza. Yes, precisely. <laughs> so, um, Hogan. Comes in first, which is odd. It is really odd. Yeah. He comes in first from the crowd with the giant um, at ringside with him. Buffer is getting his 10 grand doing his... uh, Oh, that was... Let me... Real quick, I know a note that I I did have, and I probably said this at the last pay-per-view or maybe on a Nitro, Buffer is fucking terrible. Yeah, I was about to say the same thing. I don't remember him sucking so bad. But yeah, it's Bruce embar- has all, he's embarrassingly bad. Bruce has all the talent in that family. Yeah. Like he's far superior in retrospect. Yeah. <clears throat> so, excuse Any- me. So, um can you pull up the uh synopsis for this match that you had? So, this is from the observer. I don't remember their No, go go process. back up. You you just stop right there. Okay. Um from the observer, the ghost of Hulk Hogan pinned the corpse of Randy Savage in Jesus. 18 minutes. Jesus, this match got a lot of time. Jesus. 18 minutes and 37 seconds of what turned into a Jimmy Valiant style comedy match, which <laughs> made no sense given the storyline of this is the ultimate grudge match. Hogan wrestled the first several minutes in a wig and sunglasses that didn't come off, which should tell you just how physical that match was. Can so, you believe how huge this was for WrestleMania? Yeah, and this was this here. was the WrestleMania 5 main event in 80, uh, 88? No, 89. 89 would have been 5, yeah. That's only just 7, years, seven ago. years ago. Yeah. Was yeah. WrestleMania 5 the biggest main event Oh, yeah, and Savage brings out a monster truck. Of course. I forgot about know, this. WCW monster It's trucks. actually a pretty bitchin' monster truck. It is. That's very It's awesome. a uh, Ford F-250 with sunglasses and a giant cowboy hat on top of it. Google a picture of this monster truck from Halloween Havoc 96. It's fucking awesome. Of course, it's Slim Jims all over the place. It's fucking sweet. Wow. So, yep, Hogan gets the win. <clears throat> um... With the leg drop in 18 minutes, 37 seconds. I'd uh, like to see, like, a side-by-side. WrestleMania five and this. Just kind of going with how the different, sound low on each of them, yeah, you know. And to how see, different they were. Yeah. I mean, they're both seven years older the way the they time. look and everything. Because, yeah, that, that, was, that was the biggest WrestleMania up until that point. Oh, yeah. That was a big deal. Uh-huh. Um, Savage, this is kind of the... Um, Culmination too of the Nick Patrick angle with his hurt neck. Um, Randy Anderson. Hey, what? Tell your woman to shut up. I wasn't that talking to the boy. Oh, well, <laughs> it sounded, <laughs> sounded like your friggin' fiance. So, um, anywho, um, Randy Anderson is the referee. Is the referee for this match? But of course, there's a ref bump. Nick Patrick being the head referee, 
comes down. Savage hits the elbow drop. Um, goes to pin him. Nick Patrick slides in one, two, and as he's about to count three, he hold, he holds his neck mm. and uh, won't count the three. Savage, uh, oh yeah, Savage also eats a choke, a incredibly safe choke slam on the floor. So Savage beats the hell out of Nick Patrick, gets choke slammed on the floor, but gets rolled in the ring and. Uh, Hogan's put over the top of him. At this point, Nick Patrick's recovered, counts the three, hands the belt to Hogan. Hogan's going to rule forever and a day, brother. Uh, Jesus. Yeah. So, and that's not uh, that's not the most important thing that happens on this pay-per-view. After the match, the Giant brings out a giant tub of ice water, <laughs> like dumps a- it on Hogan, which had to be cold as oh shit, God. by the way. Like, he straight up dumps it on him. Was this necessary? I I guess I don't know. Oh, he, he fucking spilled half of it. I know I didn't notice that before trying to get it in the ring. He fucking spilled half the shit on the apron. Oh my god! But Hogan's celebrating in the ring. You know, everything's good. And then, does your son have a speaking spell over there? No. Hey, that guy's got the tub. So, um. Savage gets drug out by Mark Curtis, and um, some bagpipes start playing. And this is our WCW debut of Rowdy Roddy Piper. Hogan and him cut. <laughs> God damn it! I'm trying to do a fucking podcast. So um, they cut promos on each other. Piper, um, Piper cuts kind of a weird promo, like. He talks about how him and Hogan were neck and neck for a long time and that Hogan needs to straighten up. It's almost like he's giving him like fatherly advice. He's yeah. like, it's not like he necessarily hates him. He's just like, straighten up. You're better than this. But then Hogan heals out on, on him and Piper goes crazy. The pay-per-view actually goes on Atlas. Atlas. <laughs> I never figured out who this guy was. Yeah, who is with Some guy Roddy walks Piper. in with Piper, and they never show him again. I don't know. If anybody Weird. knows who that guy is, I don't know. But um, Piper, uh, the, the show goes off the air with Piper and Hogan still talking in the ring. So yeah. we'll, uh, we'll see how this resolves on Nitro uh, the next day. But this was a big surprise. This was yeah. the uh, the first guy to ever be on Starcade and WrestleMania in the same year. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Huh. Some other people did it afterward, like Rick Rude, I believe, would do it the next year. Right. But I think this is the first first time that happened. So big pop from the crowd, pretty big deal. Um, just remember, this pay per view is two things: uh, Roddy Piper's debut and. Um, well, well, maybe one thing. Other than that, <laughs> we are going to say that's good because Grant's kid's getting restless and uh, we don't want child services called on him. So tune in next week where we'll see this resolve on Nitro on Lake to the Nitro Party at Nitro Party Jar with one B on Twitter. Check us out. Say bye, Atlas. Bye, say bye Atlas. buddy. Bye, Roddy.